Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to make this cute little felt polar bear ice cream cone. This is also a keychain. First you will need wool in light blue, white, black, pink, and a tan brown color. Next you will need a needle felting needle, which is a special needle that will make the wool denser when you poke it. You also need a felting mat to work on. This can be any sponge or foam packaging. Lastly, you'll need a tiny bit of thread for the cherry stem. Let's get started with making the head. I'm taking some white wool and rolling it into a tight ball. I put a stuffing ball in the middle to save some wool, but you don't have to. I ripped off the excess wool, and now I'm just tightening the ball as much as I can. Make sure to start with a small amount of wool because you can't take the wool off once you felt it. Grab your felting needle and start poking at the ball while rotating it. Make sure to watch your fingers or else you might poke yourself. Needle felting is basically turning wool into sculptures by using a special needle to link the wool fibers together and make it denser. As you keep poking, you will feel the wool get denser and then your needle. Poke evenly on all sides. By the way, my bandage is from a paper cut, not from needle felting, but you should still be careful just in case. I'm using three needles at once to speed up the process. Make sure to hold all the needles very tightly when you're doing this. I know there's a needle felting pin that you can buy with multiple needles, so you can also use that. To build up the size of the ball, just take some loose wool and wrap it around the ball. Make sure the wool evenly covers all sides of the ball. Remember to only add a little bit at a time to prevent it from becoming too big. You can always build it up if needed. Here's the finished ball. It should be slightly squishy and smooth. Now I'm going to make the ears. Take a small amount of wool and roll it up into a semi-circle shape. Try to make it as ear-shaped as you can. Poke down the wool with the felting needle. Keep poking and folding it into an ear shape as you felt. Make sure to poke on the entire surface and all sides of the ear, even on the edges. Just keep poking and eventually you will feel the ear get stiffer. For me, it feels like the ears take the longest because you have to felt all the way through the center instead of just on the surface. Leave some wispy parts at the bottom of the ear. This is important because it will help us attach the ear to the head later. Keep going. The more felted it is, the better it will turn out. Okay, now I'm done with both ears. Make two ears of the same size and shape. Now I'm going to use a tiny bit of light blue wool to make the inner part of the ear. Just wrap a thin strip of wool into the shape you want and place it on the ear. Make sure to leave a white border around the blue part. Poke down the wool until it's flat and attached to the ear. We want it to have a clean border, so you can use your needle to pull and drag the widths of wool in the right direction. Don't drag the needle too hard or it will break. I needed to add a little bit more wool to fill in the shape, so I'm just taking a very small strand of blue wool and placing it down. Just keep stabbing until the blue wool is flat. Now I'm done with the blue part of both ears. Try to make them look the same. Before we attach it, make sure to try on the ear to see where it goes. Then use a needle to poke repeatedly in the same spot which will create a mark. This will help us place the ear. To make the hole a little bit deeper, I'm using some scissors to slightly enlarge the slit for the ears. This will make it better to attach the pieces together. To attach the ears, just place the ear on top and spread the loose whips out so you can poke them in place. Make sure to poke down the loose whips firmly on the sides. Once one ear is firmly attached, do the other ear. You can tilt the ear in the direction you want and felt it down to keep it in place. And here is the head so far. Next, I will be making the snout. Take a bunch of loose wool and roll it into a rough oval shape. It doesn't need to be perfect. First, poke down the edges of the wool. Try to keep the wool on the lower half of the face. Don't go too high. Once you felted the edges a little, you can fill in the rest. This will make sure that the wool patch is secure before we shape it. To shape the snout, just bend and fold the wool into an oval shape. You can also use your needle to pull and drag the wool in the right areas. You want it to be a small oval shape on top of the head, so the shape is pretty much the same height all over. Just make sure the wool is firm all the way through. Also, make sure the edges are very defined. I defined the edges by poking vertically on the sides of the snout. I also added a little bit more wool on the surface to build up some height. Here's how the snout should look like. A small oval shape that's not too tall, but still defined. Okay, now I'm going to make the nose. I'm just taking a small wisp of blue wool and rolling it into a ball before placing it on. I'm carefully poking it in place to make sure that it's the right shape. You can make a triangle or an oval shape. I decided to go with an oval shape because it's easier. The nose should be very small, so make sure to start with a tiny bit of wool. Also, you want the nose to be flat against the snout, not popping out, otherwise it will look weird. Here's my finished nose. I made a mouth by repeatedly poking a vertical line with my felting needle. 
I took a small strand of black gold and placed it at the diagonal on the face. This will be the eye. I just poked a straight line down the wall. I didn't poke all the way across, only on a small part. Be precise and poke the line down. I cut off the excess ends of the wall with some scissors. These were the parts that I didn't poke down. Now I'm adjusting the eye shape and making it sharper. The other eye should also be quick to do. Try to make it symmetrical by placing the eye at the same slant, length, and position on the face. Again, I'm just cutting off the excess. The eyes are now done. To make the cheeks, I'm just taking two small balls of pink wool. I felted it into a circle shape. Keep poking it and it will eventually become flat. And that's the finished head. Now that we're done with the head, we're going to make the cone. Take a cone called the bowl and fold it in half. Form it into a cone shape. Try to get it as tight as you can. Now I'm poking the cone in the up and down motion. This is basically like the head but in a longer shape. Keep folding the wool in to create a cone shape while you're felting. Focus on the tip because that part needs to be sharp and pointy. Just like the ball, poke evenly on all sides and keep rotating it as you go. You want it to be wider on the top and smaller at the bottom. Be patient and enjoy felting as you wait for it to get denser. This will take some time. I actually came up with this polar bear on an ice cream cone idea when I saw a cat on an ice cream cone. So I decided to change the cat into a polar bear since polar bears seem to fit the cold ice cream theme better. Don't forget to felt the top of the cone. This part needs to be flat for the polar bear head to go on top. I need my cone to be a little bit wider in the middle so I'm adding some loose wool around it. Just wrap the wool around the cone. Make sure to use a small amount at a time as always. Then continue to felt around the cone. The cone will be a perfect cone shape at first so you will need to add extra wool. Just be on the lookout for any spots or dips that are lower than others. It needs to have relatively straight edges like a triangle shape. It's also important to make the top part wide enough for the head. So compare the cone to the polar bear head from time to time. Now we're almost done. We need the paws which I will create by taking a small bit of white wool and rolling it into a ball. Hold the wool with one hand and rotate it as you felt. Be very careful not to stab your fingers. It's very easy to get stabbed when working on such a small bit of wool. Or you can use two needles, one to hold the wool and the other for stabbing which will reduce your risk of getting stabbed. Keep building up the size of the paws by layering more wool on top. I kept rotating and poking it all around to get a small spear shape. These paws will not only make it look better, but it will also fill in the empty space between the head and the comb. I made two paws. Now I'm going to attach the pieces together. I took a small wisp of white wool to attach the head to the comb. Then I'm just poking across the cone to connect the head together. Poke from the cone to the head, making sure to felt the loose wool in between. Hold the head very tightly against the comb. Try to use a hand to hold the two pieces at the same time and push them together as you felt. The way you hold the pieces together at the beginning will determine the final outcome of the piece, so make sure you place it right. Wrap the loose wool around as you felt and make sure to get all sides. The important thing is that when you felt, make sure to get both pieces, not just one. So go through both the head and the cone. This will create a secure connection. Next, I'm going to attach the paws. Again, I'm taking a small wisp of wool. You don't need a lot. If you use too much, it will be visible from the outside and it won't look good. Wrap the wool around the paws. Use the loose wool to attach the paws to the rest of the body. Make sure to attach it to both the head and the comb. Go around all sides of the paws and felt the edges. I'm doing the same for the other paw. Earlier, I cut some orange brown wool for the details. Now I'm using that wool to cover up some of the white parts from connecting the pieces together. I just poke the brown wool inside to cover it up and blend it in with the cone. This will make it look nicer. I did this all around the head where any white parts were poking out. I also used that same orange brown wool to make a crisscross pattern on the waffle cone. Unfortunately, I think the colors were too similar to each other, which made it hard to see. I didn't have a darker brown color so that was the best I could do. Anyways, if you have a dark brown color, you can make two lines going one direction and two lines going in the other direction which will create that crisscross pattern. And now for the cherry on top. I cut a small piece of embroidery thread for the stem. Cherry stems are usually green but I decided to use brown because it matches the color scheme. I put the thread on a piece of parchment paper and added some white glue on top using a paintbrush. You only need a small dot of glue. The glue will dry clear. 
The reason why I'm doing this is because the thread will become stiffer and harder like a wire. This will make it easier to poke it into the cherry and create a stem. Also, it will hold its shape and not flap around like a piece of thread. I applied a thin layer on all sides of the thread and I wait for it to dry. While waiting for the stem to dry, I'm going to create the cherry. I'm just taking a small amount of pink wool and rolling it into a ball shape. Then I'll just felt it into a ball. This is just like the paws except smaller, so it's pretty easy and quick to do. Make sure to watch your fingers. Now that the cherry is finished, I'll make it a little more colorful by adding some chalk pastel. I scribbled some chalk pastel on a sheet of paper and I'm using a brush to add the chalk on top of the cherry. My cherry is a light pink color and I wanted it to be a dark pink, but if you already used a dark pink or red then you don't need to do this. I also added some chalk pastel to brighten up the cheeks. Be careful not to get any pink on the white part of the head. The stem is now dry so I'll cut it to size. Then I'll just make a hole in the cherry by using the needle to poke through. Don't bend your needle or else it will break. I'm adding a dot of glue to the end of the stem, and I'm putting the stem into the hole. Then I'm just shaping it to be a curve. As you can see, since we applied glue to the thread beforehand, it holds its shape. Before the cherry, we're going to attach a keychain. Use your needle to slide through the top of the head. Make a hole all the way through the top. Make sure you have enough wool in the hole for it to be secure. You can also use the hook at the end of the needle to pull it through and make the hole bigger. Once you have the hole on top, use two pliers or some kind of clamp to open up the jump ring. Insert the jump ring into the hole that you just made. Slide it in and turn it so that the opening is facing upwards. Once that's in, you can use the tools to close the jump ring. It's a super easy way to attach a keychain and no eye pin is required. Just to make it extra secure, I decided to felt down the wall near the keychain. You especially want to do this if you're going to be carrying it around. Now we want to place the cherry piece just right on top like so. The reason why I did the keychain first was because I wanted to know where to place the cherry so it didn't block the keychain. Just felt around the edges of the cherry. No extra wool is required this time since the cherry is so small. And now the keychain is finally finished. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.